Hello everyone. Welcome to the session on IR spectroscopy. Here in this session we will discuss instrumentation part of IR spectrophotometer. So topic of discussion here is components of IR spectrophotometer. So which are the components of IR spectrometer or IR spectrophotometer? Source of IR radiation, monochromator, sample and reference compartment, detector, and recorder. In a session of working on dispersive IR spectrophotometer, we have discussed that how IR radiation is passing through sample and reference beam and then reaching to the detector and amplified and then recorder and then IR spectra is recorded. So in this session we will discuss some of the component and other components will be discussed in the other session. So let us begin. Source of radiation. Source of radiation needs to provide IR radiation. So it is solid inert solid rod and heated at higher temperature between 1500 to 2200 Kelvin. And how to heat it is by passing the current. So inert solid rod is there. When it is heated, it produces energy in forms of heat as well as radiation. And that radiation is IR radiation. Now what will be the ideal requirements of any source of IR radiation? It should produce continuous and steady radiation. It should extend over the desired wavelength. What does it mean that in IR spectroscopy we work with mid IR more specifically for qualitative purposes then we also work with near IR. So depending on the working wavelengths, it should provide the desired wavelengths. It should emit high intensity radiation so that it can be detected by detector. So which are the commonly used IR radiation sources? Nust glower or nust filament, glower source, nichrome coil or nichrome wire, tungsten incandescent lamp, mercury arc lamp and diode laser. So these are the commonly used IR radiation sources. We will see one by one about the sources. Nust glower source. This nust glower source contains cylindrical rod which is prepared by fusion or fusing mixture of oxides of some metals. Which four metals are used is yttrium, cerium, thorium and zirconium. So oxides of all these four metals is made in the form of rod, cylindrical rod which has the 2 cm length and 1 mm diameter. Then the rod is heated at high temperature between 1200 to 2200 Kelvin by passing the electrical current and it will emit IR radiation between 1000 to 10,000 reciprocal of centimeter. What are the disadvantages of this source? It is not much conductive. So it requires preheating with the help of auxiliary heater and high heat generated so ventilation is required it emits radiation in the range of 100 to 10000 centimeter inverse not beyond that so in some cases it is not useful it is heated up to certain temperature range only and frequent mechanical failure so these are the disadvantages of nust glower Glover source. It is single silicon carbide rod having a length of 50 mm and diameter of 5 mm. It is heated at 1300 to 1500 Kelvin and bypassing electric 
current and it produces maximum radiation around 5 to 0, 0 reciprocal of centimeter. What are advantages of global source over nursed global? Here auxiliary heater is not needed as preheating is not required. And what are the disadvantages? Radiation intensity is less than the nursed glower. So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of glower source. Next is nichrome coil. What is nichrome coil? It is a simple wire of nichrome which is spirally wound and that is heated to 1100 Kelvin and then it emits IR radiation. What is the advantage? It's a simple, rugged, longer lifetime and requires less care as compared to other sources. What is disadvantage? It has the low intensity IR radiation as compared to other sources. Next is tungsten filament lamp. Here it is limited to near IR or visible IR only, not for mid IR, as it emits radiation in the range of 12,800 to 4,000 centimeter inverse or reciprocal of centimeter. Next is mercury arc lamp. It is used for far IR region. Here, mercury vapor is used at very high pressure greater than one atmosphere which is filled in a quartz envelope and then electric current is passed and then from the mercury arc IR radiation is emitted. Next is diode laser source. This kind of laser source is used in non-dispersive instruments. There are two types of instruments. One is dispersive type and another is non-dispersive type. So, this kind of instruments are using diode laser and it is used for just process monitoring of some one component or one substance. So, the whole range is not required. So, it, it gives IR radiation in very narrow Wavelength. Next part of instrumentation is monochromator. So in IR instrumentation again there are two types of monochromators which can be used is prism monochromators and grating monochromators. Both of these types are used in dispersive IR instruments. In case of non-dispersive IR instruments interferometers are used not monochromators. This prism uh, monochromators are again of two types single pass and double pass and prisms are nowadays not used much in case of IR spectrophotometers as monochromators. Gratings are still used in dispersive instruments. So let us see the difference between the prisms and gratings. Here is the diagram of prism and grating. So, prism that you all know you might have studied in case of UV visible spectrophotometry and this is kind of gratings. Grating is based on diffraction or reflection process and here different grooves are there. So, what is advantage of grating as it is made up of glass or plastic coated with aluminum. So, it covers the gratings and it has the high lifetime and it is more stronger as it is using a metal and again as it is grating it produces linear dispersion. Again, it is not affected much by moisture and having a high resolution than prism. Now sample cells. Sample cells, the role of sample cell is to, to put the sample in the path of IR radiation. Now 
which type of sample cells are used so uses of sample cell is depends on type of sample now type of sample means what is the state of sample whether it's in a solid form liquid form or gas form whether it is in a solid form liquid form or gas form so if the sample is in a gas form then it requires higher length of the sample cell 10 cm or greater than 10 cm sample compartment or sample cell is required it may be single path cell or it may be multiple path cell in a single path cell higher radiation will directly path, pass through uh, the sample cell once and in a multiple path there are multiple reflection occurs and or uh, the higher radiation is allowed to pass number of times through the sample so that was about gas what about liquid now a liquid or solution forms are also there so in case of liquids some covets and plates are used and which are having a thickness of 0 0.01 to 1 mm nowadays very compact sample cells are used with the advancement of technology so that part we will discuss in when we will discuss advancement of instrumentation now another is solid so solid can also be placed in uh, between plates or in a disc sampling part is most important part of this procedure or taking IR spectra because we encounter number of uh, types of samples either liquids, solids, sometimes semi-solids. So for a sampling part we have dedicated one separate session that is why I am not going to discuss here about the sampling. Next part is detectors. What is role of detector? Detector, role of detector is after passing through the sample and monochromator, then how much radiation is absorbed by sample or reference. If both are there, then what is the ratio absorbed by sample and reference and depending on that, it will reach to the detector, then detector will send it to amplifier and then IR spectra will be recorded. So if it is mid IR, then the radiation determined is between 4000 to 400 centimeter inverse. So which types of detectors are used? So there are two types of detectors which are used thermal detectors and photon detectors. Now what is the role of thermal detectors? Thermal detectors what they will do they will use the thermal property or heating property of IR radiation. So when IR radiation will fall on the surface of detector then that will produce heat and because of heat changes will take place and then it will be recorded or detected another type of detector are photon detector here photon detector are using photon property of the radiation so in thermal detectors we have different types of detectors which are volumeters thermocouples, thermistor, gole cell and pyroelectric detectors. In photon detectors, we have photoconductivity cell and semiconductor detectors. So these are the types of detectors which are used. To discuss all these detectors, we have a separate session. So I am not going in detail about this detectors so this was about the instrumentation or components of instrumentation of ir spectrometer in coming sessions we will discuss more interesting topics related to ir spectroscopy if you have any doubts you can contact me on given details thank you